Tips from Trestle, the Senior Living Food and Hospitality Podcast, is brought to you by E-Menu Choice Point of Sale and Clark Pro. Welcome to Tips from Trestle, the Senior Living Food and Hospitality Podcast. This podcast explores the senior living industry with a unique focus on food, hospitality, and the community experience. I'm your host, Aaron Fish. My goal for this podcast, educate, inform, and inspire leaders in senior living. How? By bringing the resident and customer experience to the front of mind in our industry. We should bring the passionate spirit of food and hospitality to everything that we do and everyone we serve each and every day. So what are we waiting for? Let's get to it. Today on Tips from Trestle, I'm joined by Dr. Milton McGowan. Milton is the Vice President of Resident Services at the Sharon at South Park in Charlotte, North Carolina. So Milton, thanks for joining me today on Tips from Trestle. Thank you, Aaron. It's a pleasure to be here. So we're doing these episodes live at the Senior Dining Conference. So obviously the first question, How's the conference experience for you been? What have you taken away? What, just tell me a little bit about your time here. I'm so happy to be here at the conference. I look forward to it each and every year. One thing that I'm really excited about is I was able to bring our executive chef, Brady Luck, and our sous chef, Katie Shelley, yeah, to the conference. I met them earlier. Yeah, so it's just a, you know, a blessing to bring them to a conference so they can kind of see what we experience yeah. when we come to conferences. And sometimes the leadership team will come and it will go back and we'll disseminate yeah. all the information. But wow, what an experience of bringing them to see it first. And yeah. I, I love the SDA conference. It concentrates on senior dining, which is what I'm really passionate about. <laughs> so this conference gets a lot of heavy hitters, yeah. a lot of experts, and, and, and I'm I'm learning a lot. And I have a lot of takeaways. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was going to say, like, when we first met a few years back, you were the director of dining That's at Sharon. And so... And we're going to talk a little bit about your growth because I think it leans into what you're here talking about. Yeah. You know, and that's why I wanted to pull you aside. I, I mean, I, I love what you do. I love what you're about. But you, you, you did a session earlier that was all about like developing and elevating leaders and, and from supervisors, managers, all the way up in senior living. And so I, I want to basically kind of walk through that, that conversation you had with everybody here. And so from your your vantage point, like what are some things that you look for or that you have found when you're trying to evaluate someone who could be an, a great supervisor or be an effective manager, especially when we're looking at senior living? Yeah. I mean, I think it's very important to look at an individual who has passion mm -hmm. and someone who really has that drive to mm -hmm. want to be in this, in this situation and want to be a part of, of a supervisory level. Oh. So the first thing I look at, I like to do it in an assessment. I like to assess the individual and, and ensure that, you know, first of all, we have to ask them if it's something you want to do. You know, and nah. sometimes we make the <laughs> big mistake of saying, this person is a great worker. Let's move them up to supervise. Yeah. And then unfortunately, sometimes they fail. They don't succeed because we don't give them the right tool. So the nah. first thing I do is ask them, is this something you would like to do? Yes. I want to be a part of a, a leadership team or, or a managerial team. So after that, then we go through a process. I set up a training program. We create what's called a growth path. So that growth yeah. path outlined. And then and one of the most important things that we have to be careful with is we have to have those tough conversations about education right. and certification. Sometimes we skip past that an individual yeah. that, you know, they're set up for failure because they don't have the right education or the right, you know, training to get them to where they want to be. Yeah. And, and in your role, right? Because, well, you know, we talked about you going from a dining services to resident services. You're not just responsible for food service anymore. You've got multiple departments. And so, I mean, what kind of challenges do you find, especially when you look across departments with, say, resident engagement or housekeeping, you know, kind of all of those ancillary services that fall under what I would call hospitality and community experience? So how do you have to approach those when you look at program development? You know, that's, that's a great question. So I have to really be careful because, you know, I'm a dining guy, right? I'm a food serving guy. Yeah. And I have to ensure that I don't just take all of my energy and focus it on dining. Yeah. So, so I'm learning a lot. Independent Living Health and the Wellness Clinic. I have nurses reported in me, right? Yeah. And housekeeping. I have the housekeeping director. So one thing that I did, Aaron, I, I did this recently as two weeks ago, 
I kept myself to work in each department as an entry level employee. Oh, wow. I worked in every department for a full day. I put on the uniform. I was not in charge. I was not the manager. I reported to the supervisor and the director. And I worked a full shift. I went yeah. on break when they went on break. When I was in housekeeping, you know, I, I cleaned bathrooms. When I was in the IL clinic, I triaged residents that came in. Oh, wow. So I think working in every department really taught me, you know, what they go through and how I can better help them in a system. Yeah. And I think, you know, even if you were to bring it down a level, right, and we're just, if you're a dining director listening to this, like, it, it's important to be in those spots and see the kind of daily challenges they're going through because it'll make you a better operator, but it'll also maybe help you evaluate what kind of training am I doing? What kind of programs do I have for developing my people? And so I think that's a really great thing to do. So uh, when you think about how you're going to develop training, right, I think that's an important piece. That's kind of your area of expertise, right, with your your PhD. And so what are some kind of innovative techniques or, or, or things you've seen out there that you've implemented that'll better foster manager growth, supervisor growth, and let them really take the bull by the horns in that new role? Sure. The biggest mistake we make sometimes is we don't really listen to the person who's being trained. I think we have to cater and develop the training program yeah. around that individual specifically. So what I do, Aaron, is I create a growth path. And then I also have what's called the OCR. It stands for Operations Communication Report. And we utilize that report in tandem to ensure that person stays on track. And there's different aspects of that training report that they have to hit. So if there's a certification involved in that, we have to get past their hurdle. If yeah. there's additional training where they leave campus and go train somewhere else, then we do that. So I think following that report and that growth path is key because some people just don't take the time. You know, we throw people in. We got we to gotta just continue doing that. Yeah. We, we have to really spend time and also training dollars. They usually cut the budget first when the budget comes. Right. Out. We have to stop doing that. We can't. Here's Reliance. Go, go, go to Reliance and learn it. And then you'll and then you'll be an expert, right? Right. So I think it's very important that we utilize the in-person training. We do a, a lot of things face to face, and we bring in experts from around the community that could also assist us in training the individual. Yeah, I think that well-rounded approach sometimes gets missed because again, right? It's you know I feel a lot of times in our industry it's you know hey you've been onboarded hey you know how to point of sale you know how to enter things into the CRM. And so you do that. Here's the keys. Here's the reports we need. And, you know, good luck. And I think it's learning has to be and training has to be continuous. Yeah. And if you don't do it that way, you're missing out on a lot of opportunities. Well, well it's a journey and I think it's ongoing and we have to check in, right? We have to check in on individuals. How are you doing? You know, how can I assist you? How can I help you? We have to have those conversations because if we assume the training is going great, and at the end of the day, we'll say, oh, this person's fine there. They're out in the training, but they're not. They haven't completed it. So we yeah. have to do our due diligence and do it successfully. Yeah, no, absolutely. Great points. And so when when you are, you mentioned that you do assessments, right, to understand, you know, you've already done, you know, first question, you want to do this. Okay. They say yes. The next one is the assessment. So when you're, when you're doing those assessments, what kind of gaps or, or skill deficiencies, whatever you want to call them, do you tend to see a lot when, when people are trying to become supervisors? And how do you, you know, put that into your training and to address that? Technology continues to drive changes in senior care, and that includes food service. eMenu Choice is an award-winning point-of-service application for managing the dining function in senior living communities. This mobile, touchscreen-enabled software enhances the dining experience for residents while streamlining processes for staff. The flexibility and functionality of eMenu Choice makes it an effective solution for any type of senior living environment, from independent and assisted living to skilled nursing facilities. It works for production kitchens or restaurant-style service with options for per-meal or a la carte pricing and accommodates a variety of payments, including bill-to-account, meal credits, and credit cards. Created by a senior care provider with more than a century of experience serving older adults, eMenu Choice eliminates communication barriers between staff and residents while enabling person-centered choices and greater resident satisfaction. eMenu Choice, transforming dining for senior living. I think the biggest gap is education. I think we can train individuals to do a certain task, right? Yeah. We can train individuals to do a job. When it comes to the certification part of the college, people get afraid of that. 
Yeah. You know, and, and listen, you don't have to go to college and get a degree. You know, that, that if that's something you want to do, we will support that. Right. And, and here's the deal. We put dollars behind that. So think about a community that will help somebody get a degree in college. Look at that expense and how we would reimburse that money back to them. You have yeah. to have that full com commitment. It has to be an intrinsic motivation. You have to intrinsically motivate them because yeah. you want to look because it's in your heart. So I think the biggest gap is the certification and the education piece. Yeah. And not because people can't do it, Aaron. I think they're afraid to do it because they think, oh, you know, I'm past a certain age. Yeah. And I, I don't know if I can go back to school and learn. You can do it. I went back to college when I was 37 years old. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I think that's such an important thing, right? Because a lot of times we we feel like that education piece, I mean, it's sometimes it's necessary for that right. next step and you've got to do that. But people see that as a barrier that they've got to overcome. When you're when you're doing the assessment and you're looking at maybe frontline employees, right? And that's there's an opportunity there where maybe college isn't so important. How does that education piece work for them into that first supervisory role or that first manager role? So I think you can do local education, right? You can develop a training program and you can have the skill set ready for them to kind of go through and learn. And and, and I'm not telling you anything new. When it comes to soft skills, that's uh, the part that we really have there to do, right? Yeah. So if I can teach soft skills, if I can teach those things, then somebody who's a dishwasher can move up to be maybe a lead dishwasher, a lead utility. And then they have that sense of pride because they've achieved something. Yeah. You don't have to go to college to do that, but you can go through soft skills training. You go through hard skills training, and then you can develop your own program within your community. And what I love about that is once we develop our program in the community, we have other communities coming to us to send their employees through our training program. Oh, that's so, nice. so we, we become the hub but training utility and senior living and supporting the other communities around our uh, area. That's very cool. Yeah. And, and I literally, as you said, the word soft skills, like I'm sitting here going, I hope he says soft skills. He kind of say soft skills, right? Because <laughs> you're so right. I mean, that's when I think about any training program in senior living, that's typically what's missed. It's like, here's the nuts and bolts. Here's the ABCs, the one, two, threes. But do you know how to have a hard conversation? Do you know how to be empathetic? Do you know how, what it takes to understand good customer service. I mean, now those are all things that you can learn. I think a lot of people feel like they have to be natural at those things, but you're right. It can be taught if, if the you program. Know, you know, Simon Sinek said, he goes, you're not responsible for the job. You're responsible for the people who are responsible for the job. Yeah. So as you move up from supervisor to manager, you have to remember you're responsible for people now who are responsible for the job. And you can't back and do the job for them. You can't micromanage them. You have to move out of that role, but you have to accept that you're responsible for individuals now, not so much the job itself. Yeah, that's a good, I think a lot of people miss that, right? Because again, like you said at the beginning, you're really good at a job, so you get promoted yeah. and it's not the job anymore. It's something completely new and different. And so what kinds of training techniques have you found useful when you're building your program? You know, you talked about having people are coming to you now. Obviously, you've got something good going on. What kind of things are you doing as a part of those programs that maybe somebody could take away or, or maybe start building around for their programs. Transition training. You know, we have individuals working in different areas and we have somebody who's an expert and, and they kind of act as a training and trainer. Yeah. We utilize that, that concept. We also do the role playing concept, which helps out, you know, helps out a great deal. A lot of people laugh and think it's funny. Right. Role playing. <laughs> right. But, you know, at the end of the day, it works that you put yourself in a situation you know, that needs to happen. So we do the basic training with, the, you know, the, the webinars. We have the reliance. We also have the in-person training. Yeah. We also have the role play. We have the train the trainer program that really assists us to kind of go through a process. And at the end of the day, listen, we'll go out and we'll 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 look at professional training and send people out to conferences like the SDA to get more information to learn new things. I, th I think that's been successful. Yeah, and I like the way you you're talking about layering it, right? Because you can't just, especially now, because we're we're mostly dealing with adult learners, right? And we know that you got to learn things a bunch of different ways, you know, 21 days to create a habit, all those kinds of things. But hitting those different touch points, I think, is so important. And I'm glad that you're, you're you have that as part of your program and, and way you develop it. And so yeah. our team members enjoy that. They, they like the layering. They say, oh, this fits me. So I'll be a part of it. They're not afraid anymore. Yeah. But some people don't take new roles because they're afraid they're going to fail. And you know what? If, if they fail because they're going through a process, we need to allow them to fail. We need to pick them up. We need to dust them off and help them get back on the horse to keep going. Yeah. And that's a good point, right? Like, so well, you, what do you do with somebody who you've done that kind of that? Yes, they want to be the supervisor. You've assessed them and you've found kind of the, the, the 
opportunities, we'll say, for them to grow. And they get in the program and it's just, there's no, not clicking, right? And you know that's, that, that's not going to happen long term. What do you do with those individuals and those employees that are facing that kind of conundrum of, well, it, I, I want to do this. I'm not, maybe I'm not ready or I'm not prepared or maybe I just don't have the skill set yet. How do you have those duff, difficult conversations to set them up? Yeah, I think you need to take a step back. Worst thing you can do, it's like back in middle school when you didn't pass the seventh grade, but they promoted you on uh, anyway. Yeah. And, and that's bad for you because you don't learn and then you suffer as you continue to go. So the, the, you have to have the tough conversation. You have to remember, you have to do what's best for the organization and the team member. Okay. You have to have a conversation and say, hey, I want to help you. I want you to be successful, but let's find out what level you're at so we can get you there. We're not going to purposely move you forward just for moving you forward, state. It's not going to help you in the long run. Right. You'll have some temporary peace and you'll be happy and excited. You'll get the pay raise. But at the end of the day, you know, things will start weighing on you because you don't really have the skill set and mm -hmm. the knowledge. We want to set you up for success. So having a tough conversation means you care about them. Yeah. You care about somebody you have a tough conversation with. If you don't care about them, you'll move them on and then they might not succeed moving forward. Yeah. And I think that's the piece that we have to work through is that sometimes that conversation isn't a negative. Correct. Everybody feels like, oh, well, you're not performing. So we're going to sit and talk. And then it's like right. all the bad. It's like, no, we're, we're sitting and talking because I need you to be successful. I want you to be successful. And right now, this is where that needs to be. So yeah, it's a, it's a definitely a, a tight rope to walk, but if done the right way, I think you're absolutely yeah. right. And, and I believe in relationship before task. I believe you have to develop a relationship with a team member. Mm -hmm. The task will come. We have to get the job done. Yeah. But if you have that relationship before task, those conversations are easier. Yeah. You don't have a relationship built with the individual. And those conversations are tough and they'll think you don't yeah. like them. But relationship before task, showing empathy really helps people because you don't know what they're going through. So it's our job as leaders to assist them and help them and get them to where they need to be. No, absolutely. So, Milton, as we kind of wrap up here, our conversation, if you're an aspiring dining director, we'll say, and you're like, I am I want to start building my team. I want to build the right way. I know I need to do something different than what I've been doing. What would you tell them? Like, what? where's the place for them to start? Or what's the way they need to approach this so that they can start to build that successful program that's really going to lift their team up? as opposed to just setting them up for the, the, the wrong things? I think, first of all, it starts with the environment. You would have to create an environment that is conducive for an individual to come in and learn. You'll keep great employees if you have the right environment. Yeah. And, and you also have to have a plan, right? You know, what did they say about leadership? You know, if you're not leading somebody, you're just taking a walk. <laughs> you're going by yourself. Right. Very true. So I think you have to create the environment, make sure the culture is there. You have to inspect what you expect, right? Mm -hmm. You have to build a program and you have to stay true to it. You can't give up on a program just because it's not happening instant gratification. You yeah. Have to build it and you have to stay with it, right? Leadership is like a muscle, right? You have to work the muscle out. You have to do the right thing. And yep. then the last thing I would say is when it comes to building a great team and coming in as a dining director, make sure you take care of your team. Don't always put the customer first before because I heard this saying that that's like a football coach putting the fan above the team member. Mm. You can't have a successful team like that. So right. you have to ensure you do it in unison, right? But you have to make sure your team is supported and they'll take care of your residents. So in order to build that strong team, you have to have the mindset, you have to care about people and you have to set the path so they can be successful. Yeah, no, all great advice. And so Milton, thank you for taking time away from the conference to, uh -huh. to talk about this and share with the panel. I'm looking forward, we've got a panel tomorrow. Yep. We're yep. going to talk about workforce development. And so- that's going to be a great conversation. So I'm looking forward to Look it. Forward to it. So, Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for joining me today on Tips from Crestle. My pleasure. So there it is, everybody. Another one in the books. Thanks again for tuning in. Please follow, like, and subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. And be sure to follow us on social media at Tips from Trestle. You can also learn more about the work I do by following me on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and even TikTok. And be sure to check out Trestle Hospitality Concepts at www.trestlehospitalityconcepts.com. I'm your host, Aaron Fish, and this has been another episode of Tips from Trestle.